a vertical one-man tank for offense and maneuvers. Here's your look at the 3-0. This is the Scope Dog Malkia Color. During the Hundred Years' War between the Gilgamesh Confederation and the Balearic Union, military technology takes great leaps towards the introduction of humanoid machine troopers and later armored troopers, codename Votom. However, the creation of the ATM-09-ST, codenamed Scope Dog in Astragius year 7198, marks the turning point in the war. With its compact design, the Scope Dog is suitable for various combat environments including space, terrestrial battlefields, and urban environments. We're going to go ahead and measure off the scope dog. It's a considerably tall collectible that you'll be adding to your shelf. I guess we'll take it right to the very top of its antenna. That's a good place as any. And stopping the Ultra Measuretron 5000, we're going to stop it right to the very top of its head, giving us a measurement that looks to be a rather impressive 14 and a half or 14. 0.6 inches in height, which we can go ahead and switch that over to centimeters, doing that right now for you guys. 37 centimeters tall is the scope dog. Now we'll go ahead, you'll also notice down below, there's also a pilot that comes included within. Don't worry, we'll get more in depth into the pilot as well as looking in depthly into the scope dog. All of that will come in a second, but before I do that, somebody is going to ask me how tall the pilot is. Despite for the fact that the pilot seems so small, running about to the knee section of the scope dog, even on its own, a rather impressive tall figure you're looking at six inches exactly which in centimeters works out to be 15 and a half about 15.4 centimeters in in height
Now, this is technically the second Scope Dog that 3.0 has released. This being the deluxe exclusive version in the Malkia colors, this really nice light, almost lavender color. The traditional or regular standard release, if you had managed to pick it up for yourself, was in the greens. A lot of greens and yellows making up the body. Uh, certainly a stark contrast to what we're going to be getting here as we have a look at the Malkia release. I suppose before we have a look at the scope dog, we're going to, of course, have a look at the pilot that sits inside. Yes, the cockpit canopy does open and the pilot will sit inside. It's actually really jarring to see a figure that's normally a standard figure for people's collection. And to think that this, if you put it again next to the leg of the scope dog, makes up only up to about its knee. Uh, looking at the details on the pilot, it is a really neat looking designed pilot, all in kind of this rusted orange. Feels almost like a rubber suit. You can see it's got a breathing apparatus there and a scope sitting on top of its, uh, its helmet section here. It's got some really great coloring here in the browns. They've kind of even gone in there and just dry brushed some like roughed up areas in which it doesn't look like it's a complete solid color. Uh, you can see the breathing tank down below and it also does come with a holster uh, we will look at a couple of the accessories we'll, obviously we'll look at all the accessories that come included with the pilot in a second um, again really nice looking piece the bonus of course is the fact that the pilot is the included accessory kind of to the scope dog scope dog is really the the meat and the potatoes if you will of this collectible but it doesn't really sell anything short for the pilot itself. Really fantastically detailed. Let's have a look at its posability. Now its head rotates back and forth. It essentially sits on a ball joint and you can see right there. I find sometimes when you are putting it into the cockpit of the scope dog that the head sometimes wants to bang. Uh, you'll see in a second there's a little bit more of a cramped quarters when you're trying to put the pilot inside. Uh, but it does have full posability. All the same sort of posability you would normally expect from a 3-0 release just on a smaller scale so arms move back and forth and out they have a bend at the elbow you can also rotate the forearm and rotate the hands all the way around the pilot also has an upper torso crunch waist swivel legs split forward and back swivel on the top cut of the thigh a double hinge on the knee sometimes when you are bending uh, the knee you'll notice that the uh, the knee pad sort of shifts off to the side you may want to just kind of correct that there's also a toe articulation or foot articulation rather i should say and that also attaches just via ball joints luckily everything on this from a visible connection point are all ball joints so if they do pop off they're quite easy to replace back even though it is a smaller figure, the pilot does get a bunch of uh, cool accessories. Of course, some interchangeable hands. Currently, the pilot only has a pair of relaxed hands in its sockets. But rest assured, the folks over at 3.0 give you some extra bonuses there as well. A pair of clenched fists. Also a pair of uh, shooting or trigger hands for the supplied blaster. And also a pair of gripping hands as well. Let me just show you how the hands change out. Well, we've already kind of looked at that. We're just going to pop the hand off. Replace it to the hand that we want to use. Couldn't be any bit easier than that. Just plug that into place. And then you can put the pilot with its blaster. This really neat looking futuristic blaster right there. Cast in what looks almost to be a dark brown with a lighter brown carried right underneath there. A little bit of silver, a little bit of wear, a little bit of wear and tear. Just really does look quite good. Now you can either put it into the pith, the holster located on the side. We'll just kind of move the arm out of the way here. The blaster just fits right into the side, just tucks into place like so. And you'll also see it peeks its way out the bottom section of the holster. Of course, we've done all the mileage to change out the hands. We're going to, of course, go in and I'll show you what it looks like in its hand as well. Just fits right into place. Now, one thing that's good about the hands is that they are of a softer plastic. So even if you want to get, say, for example, the finger around the trigger, it's simply just a case of bending the rubbery finger until eventually you find its way very securely fitting around the trigger. And it, you can, it's, it couldn't be any bit easier than that. So there you have the pilot, a decent looking, like I said, it almost feels as if it's a bonus because really the larger scope of the scope dog is really the focal point of why you're probably picking up this collectible. But it's nice that you get yourself a little smaller pilot 
of course that's going to be sitting inside there. One good thing about the scope dog is when you get it out of packaging there is very little in the way of assembly that's required. Let me go ahead and show you what exactly has to be added. You'll get these foot guard plates. Those are separate pieces when you get it out of the box. You're going to just attach those. Remember, you can see it right there. I'll just see if I can detach one of them so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here. It's a little harder once you've got them in place. Well, there you can see it right there. It's a bar that runs across and attaches to little clamp points on either side. Sort of reluctant about the idea of actually taking it off because those little clamp points are so small. I worry and fear, of course, that that's going to break off if I was to remove them. But you'll just attach one there and, of course, the other one right there. Just move the foot out of the way and you can see how the bar runs across and fits on a clamp on this side and a clamp on this side here. The other bit of assembly that's required is to add the antennas to the side of the head here. And I'll show you guys how that's done. One good thing to the credit of 3.0 is when you get all this stuff in the box, there's multiple trays of foam and each tray, each level has its own accessories. Everything is really carefully packed. Still taking things out such as this, I was a little apprehensive. I was worried if, that this would break off. And these are thinner plastic, so you may want to be a little bit careful when you are taking things out like this. Luckily though, I mean, even taking out the sheer size of Scope Dog here, I didn't really feel like this part was going to get damaged, but I was most definitely worried about this. To attach this, you'll see that there's two sides. One side has rivet points on the top corners, and it also, of course, has that noted square in the center. The other side is completely smooth, completely flat. What you're going to do is you're going to tilt the figure up, and if you look at the sides of the scope, one side doesn't have the square opening. This side does. So when you put it on this side, the side that's intended to go, you're going to have this side facing forward, rather not the other side. Just attach that in place, and when it doesn't feel like it goes any bit further, just give it a little bit of a push, you'll hear a snap, and now the antenna is in place. Again, I can't stress this enough. Really, I, as a service, I'd hopefully like to provide these in these reviews. I'd like to talk usually about things, the fragile components of figures and collectibles like this. In the case of a figure like this, this size, Generally, actually, most of the construction is relatively durable. It's made of a slightly thinner plastic. It's light. It's, it's actually misleadingly light versus what, how big you would imagine and weight you would almost kind of equate to its size. But uh, it's actually rather rel relatively durable. The only thing I really would be weary of is those antennas. So just really be careful that you don't actually bang it or clip it in any way. So let me show you the neat details to the very top of the scope dog. And then we'll, what I'll do is I'll open everything up. You'll see the canopy or cockpit inside. And then we'll go ahead and put the pilot in. The front of the, the head or helmet, I should say, of this mech suit, as you can see, has head rotation. It can rotate back and forth. And what's neat is these, the lenses also rotate as well. Now, there must be a magnet in there. I feel every time I'm moving it, you might even hear it in this video, it catches, it stops right there. I feel as if there is a magnet that's catching it each time that I'm rotating the lenses. And again, this can, you can change out the different look, the different scope that it wants to use. In addition to that, like I said, the head rotates back and forth. This does lift up. Let me just go ahead and do that right now exposing the open section which in theory the pilot would be in there the reason why i wanted to show you this as well if you move the arm just out of the way you want to be very careful because when you're bringing this back you'll probably see right now as i'm doing it those antennas get uncomfortably close to the very top of the torso the uh, the scope actually the visor section of the scope can even go further back from there but again you want to be very very careful as you're bringing this back that's as far back as you want to go be always aware where these antennas are because again like the like i said you wouldn't want to be able to you don't want to bring these back and end up breaking these off because you didn't notice that they were they were there 
If we just spin this once again around, some again, incredible detail, weathering and aging that they've added to the body, the head, and of course the section of the visor here. Uh, this is of course the Malkia color, so it's a lighter shade. Again, kind of the shade, a lighter shade of a violet, if you will. Now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna just lift this up, and inside, you can just see like the level of detail that they put in there. This small little little seating area in which the pilot will be able to go and sit inside of that. This, like I said, will open up and you can see all this like sculpting on the interior there. Even uh, actually up yeah, the top there where you would normally not even see it has been decked out in almost this kind of bluish based gray. Also some interior there. You've got a little bit of aging, a little bit of weathering. This drops down a little bit too frequently, but it, you don't normally tilt it forward the way I'm doing in this review. Just again, like all this detailing inside. There's not really a lot of extra color in it. It only seems to favor more so blacks and a little bit, like I said, of that blue color. In addition to that, we'll just bring this up a little bit, try to lock that in place. In addition to that, down below, you can also open this section up right here. And again, you want to be very, very careful. Just bring that right up. And you can see now the exposed section in which the feet of the pilots are going to be sliding through. Let me go ahead and show you how that works right now. To get the pilot in place, obviously you're going to be bending off the legs. Just bring those up as far as you can. And you're going to be bending off the knees too. Just bend them a little bit and just keep working your way up. Sometimes the fabric does bunch around the thigh portions of the figure, but still just continue to bend it until you've got the desired look. Again, you, you can really just tweak that once you get it inside. You wanna bring back these joystick handles and bring this, just bring this a little bit forward just to give it enough clearance. So hopefully you can then get the character, the pilot's whole body in there. I might actually even just straighten out the legs a little bit as well. Slide this in place. And I must, to say it's cramped quarters is an understatement. It is relatively cramped quarters to get the pilot in place. The whole time I'm also doing this as well, I'm keeping my eye on these joysticks. These are sitting on hinges, but the last thing you don't want to do is get the pilot stuck on that. And again, you just kind of keep bringing him down, push him down there and just kind of tuck the feet in. There we go. And then you can bring the hands forward. Now there are, again, a couple of those gripping hands we had already looked at for this figure. You could use the gripping hands if you so wish to have him sitting his arms comfortably, his hands comfortably onto the joysticks. And again, just kind of get everything in there periodically as you're putting the pilot in you may want to just test it by bringing this down this also by the way when you are sitting the pilot in you want to bring the control console forward so that of course the canopy can fit back over the first time i got this out of box i was able to completely close the canopy since repeated times of putting the pilot back in I always feel like I'm leaving a little bit of a gap. When I push it down as far down as I think it can go, it still sort of leaves a gap. Now, when I bring this up, the pilot is still fully... He clears it, but I feel like these little pistons in the back could probably be dropped just a little bit more. Like, there's no real, from what I can see, snapping point. Snapping is really not the word you want to be using. But there's no real snapping point where I feel like this is completely closed off. Sometimes in the process of doing so, I can get the pilot in easy enough, but I'm always kind of left with this gap where the door isn't fully closed. Now, actually, to be fair, to get the pilot into the scope dog, you could put the scope dog into a crouching pose or a down dog, if you will. Let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to be doing for that. Now, I've already gone ahead and taken the pilot back out. You, in theory, really don't need to necessarily take the pilot up. I'm just taking it out just to be on the safe side. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to flip around the scope dog. You're going to take this section right here. It's sort of its butt flap. And let me just show you what I'm doing here. I'm bringing this up. And you'll see, hopefully you'll see, when I bring this up, there's almost like a little track. When I pull this out, this will then release the crotch piece or the legs in which you can be able to drop the legs down. Because basically what we're gonna be doing is dropping the legs down, 
folding them back and then basically just folding dropping the scope dog down to its torso so that its torso and its legs are leveled to the floor parallel to the surface in which you're displaying the figure I suppose as well for this you could bring the arms out just like that you're going to bring these flaps also up as well. Basically anything that's going to be blocking or in the way, you just want to be bringing those up. The legs, then you're going to slide down, slide down on these tracks here and here. A little on the stiff side, but I'd rather be on the stiff side than on a loose side. And then you're going to go ahead and I'm just spinning it to the side so it's easier for you guys to see. I'm going to bring these legs up. They're on strong ratcheted joints. Just continue to bring them up and let me just show you what's happening here see this little part that sticks up see how this section kind of recesses in a little bit you're gonna line up the legs just bring them up like so so that you pretty much have filled in that section with the backs of the thighs here go ahead and really do the other thing now one thing you also want to do is make sure that this back leg flap is up just to make sure that nothing is getting jammed. Once again, we're gonna bring those legs up, line everything up, and it's gonna fit once again into that little section that's kind of kind of tucked in area. See how it cu cuts in a little bit. We're gonna bring the legs up to that. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention when you are bringing this section up to this section here is you wanna bring the legs up a little bit more. And actually, while you're doing that, just make sure everything is out of the way. You really do, again, want to bring these legs up as high as you can get them to really kind of about there. And the whole time you're doing it, make sure like these feet are lined up to one another. Kind of just keep them around the same place. Then once you've got that in place, then bring these legs up and you will just bring these legs down like that. Bring this up now. And then that will fit in that same grooved, grooved slot as we looked at before. Bring those up like this. There we go. And then just bring the feet down. Now the feet have sort of, let me just show you here. There's a little bit of almost like a dropping point of those, of those toes. Now these are plastic, so you want to be a little bit careful. This is, of all the places, you can probably hear that little click. I just lock that in place and lock this one in place. And there you go. Just kind of compensate everything. Bring these again a bit up, just a little bit more up than you want them to be. So this side is basically perfect to where I want it. I'm going to make sure I've done the exact same thing on the other side. And you want to just bring those feet down. And then once you get everything in place, kind of lay it down on a surface, on a table, or anywhere that you're going to be displaying the figure. And then you're just going to bring those feet down, like so. Again, you want to just be, just be a bit careful with that. Drop the flaps down. You bring the arms down as well, like that. And then you've got it in its crouching position or its downward dog. Not being completely happy with what I end up doing here, I just kind of brought the legs up a little bit more and there was one more tab point that I could drop these legs. You're basically gonna be taking the feet and arching them this way and you'll hear a locking point. Once you have everything in place, like I said, and everything's leveled off, he does have these little drop points here, these little spikes that you can stick out again to kind of mount it to secure it into the ground. Now I'm introducing the knapsack for the scope dog technically earlier into the video where I would not have looked at it just yet. I wanted to wait until I kept the accessories later. But when you have it in the downward dog or in the crouching position, the knapsack actually would be able to attach to the back torso of the giant mech suit. The thing is though, as it normally goes when you are attaching it, there are these little hook points here, kind of little, uh, again, little hooks and those will latch into the back sections here. Now the thing is though, there's no way that that's gonna fit on it. Uh, the instructions actually indicate that you don't wanna put it any bit more than a, a 45 degree angle. So this section right here, I know we're kind of talking about this early on, but you can bring this back 
and then this will sit if I can show you here this will still sit onto these notches here now one thing is the instructions say that this should in theory fit this should secure in place I do find that it doesn't quite sit perfectly in place it's supposed to be able to sit like this so one thing I did do when I wanted to display it with the backpack is I'm actually going to bring this a little bit further forward. Technically, it's not really supposed to be like this. It is a little bit supposed to be a little bit more accordion and folded up. But I find it's the only way that you can get the knapsack onto its back. And again, that just sits in place. And kind of like it does fit on there. It doesn't quite grasp onto these little tap points on either side. But it does fit well enough that it does make the backpack officially sit onto kind of the torso section of it. Um, again, it's not 100% dead on, but I find folding the legs back it effectively at least gives you the option and the, uh, the ability to attach the backpack. Uh, normally, like I said, if you look at the instructions, the instructions kind of have it back to what we had it before, but there really isn't any way that you can get the backpack in place like that. While it is in this crouching position, you can bring ahead, go ahead and bring the canopy back up. Kind of do your best to lock that in place. You can bring this up as well. And then this, in theory, would be the way that the pilot would load into the scope dog. Just kind of crawl its way in, sit itself back down into the cockpit. And you just want to be very careful and be very weary of these joysticks on either side. You don't want those to break in the process. Just bend the legs. This one leg got stuck. There we go. Get this leg down. Get this leg down. Tuck that in place. I'm glad that this section does open up so you can get your fingers in there and just sort of guide and aid the feet from getting in place. And just get the legs all in there. Bring this back up. And there you've got the pilot once again. To get the mech back to its regular standing position, you're basically going to re just reverse all the steps. Bring the flaps up, make sure the arms are sort of all out of the way. Bring that up, bring the flaps up, flaps up. There we go. And then we're going to bring the legs down. We can also make sure these are up, bring the legs forward. Do the same thing on the other side. Be really careful of these. You want to make sure that those are fully up. Drop the legs down. This can fold back down and on both sides. You can kind of adjust the feet later on. There we go. And then you're gonna bring the leg up, bring the leg, push it all the way up, and then spin this around. Remember this little, this little uh, track system here? Well, now that this is back in place, just spin this around. You can push this back in, drop the back flap down, and then just replace all the flaps back to the way that they were. Compensate for the feet because the feet may need to get straightened back out. Bring the arms up. And there you have it back to its standing position. There you go. So let's check out some of the awesome details that are making up the scope dog. I want to go back and I want to talk about the uh, the backpack, the unit that of course is going to be clipping onto the back. It's pretty intricate actually, as intricate really as the rest of the scope dog itself. Again, I wanted to show you because we had only looked at it in the crouching position, but I just want to spin this around. I also want to show you some all the little labels and details that are on this. Let me just actually, you know what, I'll hold it up so you guys can see a close-up look at all the little scripture and labels and warnings that would be all over this. Uh, also clad with all this additional wear and tear. They've just done a fantastic job on painting this. Something that 3.0 is always really good for doing. But again, we're going to go back and we're going to look at the backpack. This again can tilt forward and back, but because we're not putting it in the crouching position, I don't actually have to have it on that 45. Instead, I can actually keep it straight. Here are the little tabs on the top or these little opening slots here, which will attach to, see these little clamp points here. You're just going to fit this in place and this is going to drop right down just like that. And it stays securely in place. 
One of the other things that you can do as well, when you take it back off, you're obviously gonna be reversing the steps. So you're gonna be lifting it up and pulling it out. Uh, one of the other things that's neat about it is there's these little panels that can open up, as you can see right here. They just untap and there's this one rectangular tab that'll fit just in that slot right there. That just fits back in place and taps just like that. That's how the backpack will fit in place. Um, and then again, if you just look at the details, I'm gonna just put just put it right there for one quick second. Um, you've got like a little bag here that it's been wrapped and sort of harnessed its way to the top section right here. There's all these little things that open and close on it. Let me just grab one of them so you can see. There's the top section right there. Um, this I believe will hold the parachute. The parachute will be something that could be attached to this via magnets. There's all these little open slots here. These are magnetized. These will open up. You can kind of see the functions located inside there. I'm gonna go back to these. Remind me to do that. This is magnetized on this side also as well. Just untaps like, like so. And this is really neat. If you look down below, everything you're looking at on this pretty much has an open compartment to it. This opens up, there we go. And inside, kind of a little trickier to get your fingers into, it includes what I believe to be a radio, a little radio um, terminal, if you will. And that's what it looks like on the other side. And there's a little storage tanker. And also, if you can get your fingers in there as well, there's a little toolbox and what looks to be a little medical, like med uh, aid kit. And it looks like this opens up. It doesn't, there is a hinge there, but just again, really, really hard to kind of get your finger in there to get it opened up. Actually, upon further inspection, neither the tool kits or the med kits are something that can be opened up. However, what you can do is they are the appropriate size. They can get the little handles and just get them around the finger sections here of the pilot. Kind of a little trickier to get your hands in there. But the pilot can actually carry around, there you go, can carry around the med kit, carry around the tool kit, and also has a little tank and stuff that he can carry around as well. Continuing at the pack, you also get a whole bunch of these ammo tanks, a total of five. As you can see, each one of them are labeled here on the front with some additional scripture. They kind of have a dry brushing of silver that's been added to them. And each one of them also have a handle in which you could have the pilot carrying them around. Now, if you look at the bottom section here, you'll see rather two large clamps. If you bring this bar forward, you can take three of the five and these just tab into place. I do find them to be a little on the loose side. They're just the same length, just the same width, I should say and they slide up or you can push them in. But they don't feel often at times like they're secure enough. In fact, when you start putting second and third one in, it will usually happen. You'll put one of them in and it'll knock the other one out in the process. But like I said, they stay relatively well. This one here in the middle uh, is a little bit more secure than the ones on the end. And then you'll just wanna bring this bar slightly down. And then you've got the extra ammo packs. You'll also see that there's these ringlets on either side. The ringlets just detach quite easily, actually. There you go. You just want to be a little bit careful, of course. I say easy, but these are still made of thin plastic. You also have a couple of other ones, two more of these to be exact. This can just loop itself through. Then you can go back and just clamp this back into place. Just be very careful. It's a lot easier to do this uh, with taking this actually off a little bit easier than trying to finagle it back on while it's still on the pack and again you just want to pry this a little bit there we go line it line it up in the holes and then you've got the extra packs thank goodness that these are magnetized so it just make, makes things a lot easier to change those out and then you can do the exact same same on the other side here as well What's pretty neat as well is the Scope Dog's got all these little customization sections that you can kind of mix and match and 
decide really how you want to display it. For example, on the side of its armor skirt plating, you can take off what appears to be three separate magazine clips. Yes, all of these are removable from one another. A little harder to kind of get your finger in there. It's easier if you put your thumb there and just kind of flick it up and you can remove three individual magazines. Uh, that can come off and actually to rather that you can take both of them off. We'll just bring the arm up, just detach that. And remember these tanks that we had a look at? You flip those around. They all have the same universal uh, rectangular peg that can then attach to the side, just like that. Now, if that isn't so much your fancy, the folks over at 3.0 also give you these smaller, kind of more streamlined tanks. I don't know if they actually hold ammunition like the other ones, but again, those can just attach into place. When we look at its firearm, you'll also see this rather familiar shape being utilized. So let's have a look at the firepower that comes included with this figure. For starters, and its largest form, this is the handheld GAT-22 heavy machine gun. It's a rather large, very imposing looking firearm, uh, as much giving the afforded scratching and wearing and tearing that they really gave the larger mech suit as well. It's really a neat looking designed uh, sidearm. Sidearm really being an understatement, it's a rather large firearm that can be supported in its hand. I'll show you that in a second. Just FYI, I remember we had talked about these canisters, these ammunition tanks? Well, they actually can tab right to the very side, depending on which preference you want to go with. You can either go with this one right here, or we can go back to its leg, just detach the one that was here, and you can just take the same rectangular peg and fit it into place like that. This can also be converted over to a short barrel version of the same gun. You just want to detach this like so, and you can go ahead and remove the front section. You can go ahead and replace this, just move this out of the way. This often at times just kind of gets in the way, just move that out of the way. Uh, also get the shorter version of the barrel. And there's a specific way, I almost did put it the wrong way, there's a specific way in which this tabs into place. A larger circle is greeted with a smaller circle, kind of gives you your cues as to which way it's supposed to go. And you have this as well. Now it also does have a removable stock, something of which you can't quite get to because you actually have to push through this pin. Speaking of pin, they give you this kind of, well, little metal pull that you can use to push through the the bolt that holds the stock in place. Once you do this once or twice, it's quite easy actually to push it through. The This section, the little tab point, the little post pops through. Make sure you don't want to lose that. Definitely don't want to lose that. And you'll just remove the stock right off. And then you've got a smaller version for it to wield. In both cases, depending on which way you want to have him displayed with it, there's this little, I don't know if you can see it on both sides, see this little hinge? Well, it's this separate piece of plastic, and what it actually is, is it's a hinge. So you wanna get your finger in there. If you have trouble doing it the first time, you can also use that same post that we were just looking at and utilizing for removing the, the stock from the gun. Just wanna push it, and you wanna push it near the bottom section right here you'll see right off the bat it swings this out. Once it's swung out enough, you can just grab your finger, swing it completely out, and now you've got the connector point that's gonna to attach to its hand. Now, the way it has, wor the way they've done it is that it, swing it swings both ways. It either swings out on this side or it swings out on the other side, depending on, again, which hand you wanna use it for. Say we wanna use this hand, so the first thing we'll do You'll also notice by me doing this how fully articulated all the fingers, all the digits are on this. You're gonna go ahead and take the take the gun, take that little tab point that we just looked at, and see this this little square slot, or rather a rectangle. You'll just attach that in place. You might want to also bring the thumb out because the thumb obviously you don't want to get that in the way of things. And this will just line itself up. Bring that thumb back a little bit. There we go and this will just attach into that slot, and then once that's in place, you can bring the fingers around. As I said, so we're gonna go ahead and just bring that thumb around, bring the three fingers around. Thank goodness again that they are fully posable. 
And the hardest thing to do is get the, the pointer finger around the trigger. It involves you having to bend the finger. Just bring that around. And now all of a sudden you've got, you've got it holding the gun in hand. Obviously, we'll talk about the articulation for this guy in a moment, but it is rather impressive. The angle and the way that you can get the legs, the arms, and the torso in place, you can really get this one in various different poses, especially with the arms. There's pretty much not anything that you can't do with the arms. Like I said, it has full posability in the elbows, the wrists, and even in the shoulders. For weapons, the scope dog also technically has one more trick up its sleeve, literally. It does have a punching fist action. And to show you how that works, I'm just going to grab the scope dog here. Grab the arm section right here, and if I just bring this out, you can take the forearm and it slides right out, kind of on its own piston here. It pulls out, and it's just simply a case of popping that back into place. You can then also, in addition to that, you can bring the, L, the uh, shoulder section out here, and this will also bring out also, just to kind of give you some extra distance. What's neat about this also, remember these? These were the things that were located on the side of its leg, and I told you you could remove them off. Well, what you can also do too is if you pop this, if you push the arm back in, you can take the bullet and just slide it in place. You want to make sure you got the right way going. Just tabs into place like so. And just make sure that's pushed all the way back in. You can take the, I think it actually goes this way. There we go. Pop that in. And when you push it in, you'll hear a snap, a little kind of clicking. This little button on the side kind of looks more like a triangle. If you squeeze that, it pops back out the bullet. And again, you can just rinse and repeat, pop that back in and press the button on the side to eject it back out, just like that. Now, whether you were able to pick up the standard release of 3.0's Scope Dog or the exclusive Malkaia color release, the articulation on both of them is exactly the same. So looking again at the head, the head rotates back and forth, the visor hinges up and down. Again, being careful, got to be careful about that antenna. This also, the scope, can shift back and forth, and you can also rotate the various different scopes, depending on which one you want to go with. Technically, there is a hinge joint articulation point in the canopy of the cockpit, and this section also opens and closes as well. For the arms, they hinge out, and a secondary out as well. If you can see it right there, there's, so basically there's a ball joint happening here, and then there's a hinge joint right on the forearm, and then this section right here also hinges back and forth. The bicep rotates all the way around. A nice, strong, clickening ratchet joint in the forearm, I love that. The hands rotate all the way around. You just gotta be careful of this flap right here. The arms do, the hands do rotate all the way around. And then each of the four fingers uh, have a ball joint. And let me just show you here, a knuckle joint. I'll bend it this way so you guys can see. There's a knuckle joint here and a knuckle joint here. So it allows the four fingers to bend three different ways. And then you've got the ball joints on the very ends. The thumb also has its own ball joint, a hinge joint and you can rotate that in and out as well. Certainly ideal for if you want to have it holding its weapon. Its waist swivels all the way around. Just be mindful of the skirt armor. You don't want that clipped accidentally. For its legs, they do go forward and back. Again, you just may want to bring these up just so that they're out of the way. Legs go forward, legs go back, legs go out. Nice, strong, ratcheted joints. I don't feel while I'm moving joints on this, I guess except for the feet, but everything else feels really stable and strong on this. The feet also technically do hinge back, but that's only really for when you are transforming it into the down dog or crouched position. Um, and then as for the feet, kind of a section where you may want to hold on to the calf area, and then the feet also have their hinge joint back and forth and forward and back. There is also toe articulation, and to some extent, there's also the little spikes that stick out below as well. You'll also know, or let me be the one to tell you as well, there's some wheels on the underside of it. In theory, you could roll this. 
Um, obviously stability would be the issue and can't really imagine why you would be rolling this across your shelf or your bookcase but the scope dog does technically have that as well if you are worried though that the rollers do sort of affect its stabilized nature of just standing straight it's not the case at all the rollers are actually far enough in that you can stand it firmly planted on its feet and the scope dog isn't going to go anywhere the Armor Trooper Votum Scope Dog and Melkea color scheme from the folks over at 30, that's a mouthful, is a beast of a figure from that company. They're sort of known for doing mech suits. They've done them in the past, and this one here, the Scope Dog, is no exception. There's something about its size, its presence, and of course the color scheme, which I want to mention a little bit, that the color scheme I'm digging, I'm loving this light lavender color that the exclusive Melkea color scheme has that the regular I don't want to say bland but the regular traditional green color scheme uh, simply just doesn't have while the sculpts are exactly the same and really for the most part the accessories are for the most part the exact same there's something to be said about this bright color palette it really does bounce on a shelf when you actually have it out on display now, when I did get this initially out of the box, I was a little weary, being the fact that this is comprised of plastic and not die cast, I really felt like some of the pieces were going to be fragile. Now, I will say, after getting this all said and done, all set up, and over the course of this review, I can safely say that it feels durable. Some of the joints, when you initially bend them, you feel... you feel a little reluctant you don't know how much of a give those joints actually have the more though the more limber the scope dog actually gets the more you realize there's some durability to those joints i love the fact that they put ratcheted joints for example in the knees and the elbows so when you are moving it you really feel like there's some strength behind its bend and even the smaller accessory can i even call it an accessory the smaller pilot that comes included with it does feel like an accessory when you look at the grand scope of the scope dog it does feel like the the smaller figure of the pilot does feel like an accessory but nothing really has been spared or skimped on the smaller pilot it's just as detailed and just as poseable as the larger scope dog and of course the icing on the cake is the fact that you can open up the canopy and fit the pilot deep inside you may want to be a little bit careful and slow and patient when you are putting the pilot inside you certainly don't want to clip the joysticks the control console that's located inside for the most part everything again about the scope dog feels secure feels stable in fact my biggest problem with it was actually more in the backpack and actually holding those ammunition tanks in place still when i are when i am moving the figure around i do feel like those tanks are falling off way too easy i wish that they could securely fit in place a little bit better than what they were Still, this is a great looking piece for fans of mech suits, specifically from the Votums line, or really just rather anybody who is a fan of mech suits will probably want to be jumping on their chance to pick this one up for themselves. Now, I will say though, this is an exclusive. Being the quantity is a little bit more limited, the price is also a little bit higher on this unit. Most online sites are currently circulating this one around at about a 450 US dollar price point. If that does seem like that's a bit of a deal breaker for you, just keep in mind again the size and the scope of the armored trooper known as Scope Dog. It is a really, again, a nice looking piece, but I know you are paying a little bit more because it's a larger unit. So again, about a $450 price point. So happy hunting and good luck if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself. Today we were having a look at the 3-0. This was the Armor Trooper Votums, and this was the Scope Dog in the very bright lavender color. Loving this color scheme, the Makea color scheme. Uh, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other 3-0 reviews, I've done a whole bunch of them, make sure you check out the playlist on the way out. Also, if you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you do so, and certainly keep your eyes peeled. I never like saying that, but I still do. Keep your eyes peeled, because new reviews will be coming soon to this channel, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.